addressing you because the history of neglect regarding homelessness was not your responsibility during those times. That being said, I'd like to quote a U.S. Supreme Court judge who said, ethics is knowing the difference between what you have the right to do and doing what is right to do. I'm happy to read it again, but I think um, you could always watch the video and play it back if you didn't understand it or didn't get it. What all of us come here for, or what um, was alleged as our agenda, is because there's people who have no voice in this county. We hope to offer them that voice, lend our voice on their behalf to help save lives. So for me personally, it's to help save lives as the reason I'm here, to help make Orange County a better place to live. I have grandkids, I have family, I'm fortunate that way. Why would I continue to ignore the issues that go on in this county? Why would I continue to accept mediocrity? Why would I continue to accept corruption without voicing some opposition to that? Agendas, it's simple. There's the right thing to do, and then obviously there's the wrong thing to do. The pattern, the history of this county's supervisors has not been good when it comes to homelessness, and it's documented that it's not been good. You'll hear more about this in the meetings to come. Next speaker, please. Yes, my name is Janine Robbins, and I'm from Anaheim. And Andrew, I find it very interesting that you chose to attack us when we still had opportunities to talk. So let me say, last week, on Thursday, you told me that the advocates with their lawsuits were the ones responsible for any progress made towards solving homelessness. Yet today, during your rant, you accuse us of a secret agenda. Let me enlighten you as to my secret agenda. It's the same today as it was the very first time that I spoke here all those years ago. My agenda is housing first, which is housing instead of shelter, and doesn't kill people like yours does. Housing first saves lives. We call you ignorant because you refuse to learn. We have spent hundreds, if not thousands of hours here over the last years trying to educate you on the causes of homelessness, the solutions of homelessness, and the cost to solve homelessness. And still you refuse to learn. You claim, there was, you claim that there was one shelter operated by the county, but there's two. There's Bridges at Kramer, which has its own form of corruption, and then there's the hellhole across the street, otherwise known as the courtyard. I would really be curious to know how many people in the courtyard today were there on the very first day that that facility opened. County dollars spent in any way towards the city-run shelters makes you all complicit in their failures too. For example, when Wise Place, when La Mesa, when the Salvation Army evict women in the dead of night to the streets or give them a ride and drop them off at La Palma Park at two in the morning. That's on you five because of your complicitness by giving them money. One last thing, and this is to you, Andrew. How dare you criticize Cal Optima in any way? Those board members will be so interested to hear the opinions of a fellow board member on the shabby job that they did compiling their numbers of homelessness. 
but don't worry, we'll be there on Thursday to inform them of your high regard for them. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker, please. I'm Mike Robbins. Oh, of course not. Uh, wow, let me retort. We began many years ago. We showed you the 10 year plan that you weren't following. Doug and Donald, please, uh, we started years ago. We showed them the 10 year plan. They weren't financing it. We weren't moving forward on it. We showed them the problems and we showed them solutions. And then we went to a little tougher game after that. When I first approached Susan Price, it was right out here in the lobby. And the people in the riverbed didn't have water and they didn't have bathrooms. And I asked her for help. And she said, uh, not on my watch. And so, of course, you have a person there who doesn't care, didn't care about the health of the people on the riverbed, didn't care whether they live or die, in my opinion. So I, I have the right, I believe, to say that about her, and you have the wrong person in this position. Jamboree Housing and some of these other corporations are building housing. They're big corporations with executives that make $450,000 a year or more. And when they build 500 housing units, you take me there and show me that they have 500 units with wraparound services for the homeless. That's just, uh, that's just a dream. CityNet. At the Anaheim City Council meeting about two years ago, they said, well, we took 2,400 homeless people off the streets. 2,400 at that particular time when there were 5,000. So half of the numbers they took off the street. Of course, you could see that. You could see that they took half the people off the street. There's no oversight. So they can make up any number they wanted. So we're not really sitting at fans, and neither should you be. I can certainly find that meeting for you on the Anaheim City Council and show you exactly what they said. Uh, I, I had to walk down there with one of the other people to introduce them to the homeless people. Um, he was involved in the, the rehab project. Uh, he wouldn't even talk to the homeless people. And I remember when he came in and said that he helped 150 people or 250 people. I confronted him and he changed that number. Sean Nelson identified 1,500 county properties. I believe he said that there's, there's not properties or you have to depend on the cities. Uh, well, what happened to the 1,500 properties? I mean, uh, they just, I, I don't know what you did with them. Um, when you intend to build properties for veterans, and there's 420 of them out there statistically, and you're building them for 20 or 30, and that's always been our problem, of course, is that when they're building the housing, they're building it for 20 or 30 or 45 or 70. When we have a 40% increase year to year, Obviously, if we're building 100 or 200 or 500, and we're 10 years behind on the plan, Doug and Donald, 10 years behind, there's a lot of money to catch up and a lot of housing to build in the process. But we can beg and borrow and steal, but in the final run, it seems we have to fight also. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Any additional speakers? The last two speakers are Mallory Lopez and Charles Coppa. Good afternoon. My name is Valerie Lopez, and I was very fortunate to work for the County of Orange back in 1990. I work under Jan Mittemeyer, so I was able to see some very successful projects and um, just see the, uh, build a lot of relationships, such as uh, William Lyon with Martin Aviation. So when I heard Billy Powers' plan, I thought that that was a phenomenal idea, and I think it's it's so um, crucial that the county look at what she has established, and the fact that she could bring Ruth Jacobs over here to, to make this a reality is important to all of us. Um, I was a victim of, of an illegal foreclosure. Uh, Bank of America had me believe that they were investigating the fact that I was in a void contract. The lender never existed, America's Wholesale Lender. And I was a victim of Steve Silverstein, who needs to be investigated, as well as Don Train Dang, also known as Trina Dang. Um, Trina called my attorney, asking her to please help me get my money back. Um, I know her Deatrice is void. Um, I just want my money back, and I'll go my, my own separate ways. Well, her attorney talked her into moving forward with the illegal eviction, and I was evicted out of my home. I had to shut my business down. I had to learn the law. 
and I was successful on February 21st, 2018 in convincing, convincing three appellate judges why the illegal eviction was wrong, why the judges it completely ignored some writing so even a third grader could understand. My historical home was completely demolished. Over $300,000 was invested into that home. It was completely ruined, turned into a Home Depot home. I have reversed the judgment. The appellate case is a 32015 the judgment is reversed and the matter is remanded. The court trial is ordered to issue an order vacating the summary judgment. I went through all that pain for nothing. So I plead with you to please look at this plan, work with Mark Jacobs. Let's get that, let's duplicate that $150 million fund that they obtained in order to change the homeless situation. I know it's important to all of us. So let's do this. My name is Charles Kappa, and I invite you to look right at me because I'm going to give you the most important information you're going to hear for the first time today. I support the resolution. That's why I was invited here. I know of the actions already set forth in Miami and in Hawaii, and hopefully here. That's a lateral motion to help homelessness and the things already brought forward. I'm not here to discuss that. I'm digging deeper. I'm an honored fellow and probably the oldest man in the room here at 79, this one. And I have studied information systems and I have been honored for bringing together any piece of micro imaging you may have handled in your life for the past 50 years. Mm. That background has led me to every three letter US government agency, CIA, DIA, I can name them. I help put systems in. You've used them and now we're all thankful for online digital storage. We're here, we've made it, but we don't know what you do and what you do and what you do in your daily details and your belief system. Now I'm gonna tell you the story. Today is the 400th anniversary of people stepping foot on Jamestown, Virginia. Amazingly, for, yeah, amazingly for for a period of 300 years, there were two court systems in the world. Courts at law, which most of you lawyers know all about. You practice law. There were courts in equity with the maker of the universe. Courts in equity were removed from the US system on the exact date 80 years ago by 14 judges who never had it approved under law. We have been in treason under the federal rules of civil procedure on the, on the chart. They've been revised 80 times and never approved, approved by uh, President Roosevelt or the court of uh, Supreme Court or any following court. I called and made a special call to tell you that the movement back to divide courts into courts at law and courts in equity with counselors in equity, not attorneys at law, is in motion. I invite all of you to join hands together and look to yourself as to your role in dealing with human beings in a court of equity and not human, uh, not corporate entities in courts at law. We must change, we must communicate with the people to our left and to our right. This is not about skin color, flesh color, racism or anything else. It's about you and your maker. That's what I want to leave you. We must reverse the tyranny and treasons that were put into the record by people who were born before I was born. Right. Thank you for your time. Thank you. So we'll start with the CEO comments. I think, okay, and then to my left, Supervisor Chaffee. Oh, uh, yes, I have a couple of comments. I had asked a question earlier about the medical care of uh, people who were in the electronic monitoring service. And while they are in jail, they lose the right to Medicare and that sort of thing. But once they are home, they regain that right. So that saves money actually for the county. Uh, the county no longer pays for medical care while they're in jail. 
So uh, the uh, sheriff has a uh, ample budget uh, to use the electronic monitoring, and I would encourage that use. It's a much more holistic uh, way of uh, taking care of people, and I think the rate of the word I can never say right or spell recidivism reduced, and meaning they do not come back to jail again. Um, I uh, am, uh, well, I did uh, appreciate it being told I wasn't the subject of the remarks. However, I'm a member of this board and does pay me when other members are criticized. I am part of the team, and if there's a problem, I want to be part of the solution. I look forward to working with each of you. Thank you. Great, thank you. Supervisor Joe. Uh, nothing, thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, Supervisor Wagner. All right, Vice Chair Steele. Okay, any adjournments? Um, to my left, adjournments. To my right. Okay, I have two adjournments for today. I adjourn today's meeting in memory of the Honorable Joseph R. Brown, Jr., known as Joe Brown, former mayor of the city of Laguna Niguel, who passed away June 29th at the age of 92. During World War II, Joe served with the American Field Service in Italy and India. He received his Bachelor of Arts degree from Yale, Master of Arts from USC, and PhD from USC. Joe's, dri Joe's drive, keen business sense, and leadership skills propelled many of the companies he led as president or vice president to New Heights. Joe believed in giving back to the community, and he was a longtime member of the Rotary Club of Laguna Niguel, and also served on the city council in Laguna Niguel as mayor. He is survived by his three sons, Christopher, Joseph, and Timothy, grandson Jeremy, stepdaughters Joe and Doe, and stepson, or step-grandson Nicholas. A memorial service was held at the Laguna Niguel Presbyterian Church. I also adjourn today's meeting in memory of Bill Kendall, who passed away on Father's Day, June 16, 2019, after a long battle with cancer. Bill was a founding member of the Dana Point Harbor Advisory Board and represented personal watercraft and dry boat storage constituents. As such, he was an integral um, part in building the Dana Point Harbor Advisory Board into an influential advocacy organization for the Dana Point Harbor community. Bill will be greatly missed as the ocean and boating were amongst his greatest passions, along with his love of life and devotion to his family. He is survived by his daughter Amanda and his son Alex. So I ask that we adjourn today's meeting in memory of Bill Kindle and Joe Brown and extend our deepest condolences to their family, friends, and loved ones for their loss. And with that, I will adjourn. We don't have anything to report out of closed session, is that correct? That's correct, Ben. I'm sure the board took no reportable action today. Okay. And with that, I will adjourn today's uh, meeting of the Orange County Board of Supervisors. Thank you.